White Lake near Salmon Arm, British Columbia is a well-known lake to all fishermen. The huge shoal areas have abundant aquatic life and this leads to big rainbows. White Lake was purposely killed off of all fish a number of years ago and was restocked with rainbows. Since then, the lake has flourished. Fishing at White Lake, that's today on Sport Fishing on the Fly. That's Quite a good close. start. Yeah. Real good start. Well, the thing was, we got to get the good drift on the fly, and it just wasn't comfortable. I was in too deep of water, and they are moving in about eight to ten feet right now. That's where all the fish seem to be hanging out. So I got my little illuminator out there, long line, and cast it out there, chronometer technique, of course. And I was able to plug this guy, the little green guy. Well, you just switched it up too. Is so that the front of the boat? So I'm just not getting the good drift. So we moved over here. So why don't you explain a little bit? Look at the, the way the, the wind's pushing us right now and explain what you did because I think that was the key for you catching that fish. It was. I was in a little bit, a little bit too deep of water. And I like the way the shoal's built up here. What we're doing is we're on kind of an edge. We have deeper water where we're anchored about 20 feet. And then it goes really shallow into that four to eight feet zone all the way through that edge. And instead of fishing from deep water into the shallows, I was fishing all along that shoal edge, probably in about eight feet of water. Just cast it out there, let that fly go down a little bit, and it turned out quite good. He hit it, the little guy, but that's a good start. Well, I'll let you net him. There he is. Oh, you popped the, the hook out. A nice little guy. Here, I got this. We'll switch it up, we'll take yeah, your rod. There we go. There we go. Here, I just want my hands first. Always wet your hands before you touch the fish. I did, this is just a little guy. I took it right where they normally do. The illuminator. Right on top of the lip, the illuminator. And I'm just going to let him go. I can set him back in the net if you want. Oh, okay, sure, you can let him go. Should be okay here. We, uh... Oh, there's something he said for catch and release net. So. Okay. This one off, yeah, there he goes. What makes White Lake special are the shoals. Down the east side of the lake is the 1,000 yard shoal but we found our best fishing in the eastern corner of the lake and then at night on the shoal at the west end. There's a no fishing zone in the northeastern corner that is signed, but make sure you check the regulations before starting to fish. All right, right on. Came into this little area, we finally got a little bit of a riffle happening here and uh, you can see the fish cruising down below us. There's, they're actually right on the morrow, so we're thinking they gotta be going after damsels. They're probably right on the morrow, maybe kicking up some of the morrow and then turning around, going back and picking off some of the damsels. So six or seven of them feeding down there. Finally, I think we're into a nice silver fish. We've had a couple of post spawners. I think we got a nice silver guy on right now. I actually had a refusal. I had on, we got a fly here that we call the, uh, which is a really productive fly. We call it the damsel leech because it can kind of imitate a damsel or a leech. Came through this little marrow section and saw the fish right behind my fly, kind of came up to it and just turned away. Oh, total refusal like that, you know, you got to change it up. So I did and I went to this fly we call the LGF. And uh, first cast through, I made sure I had to have the patience to let that fly get right down. And I did. And then I stripped it through and there he is there. So you're gonna come and do the guide thing for me? Do the I throat sampling? certainly will. All right, this guy's about ready, I think. Oh, got to slide him in here. There we go. Nice fish. That's a beauty. That is a dandy. Beautiful fish. So what we're gonna do, before we unhook him, is do a throat sample. So we're gonna turn him upside down. Keep him in the net. Wet your, wet it good. Press it, slide it in only to the esophagus, and take a sample. There's the LGF, you got him right in the side. Right in the side of the mouth. There he is. Hold him up for everybody. There he is. 
Right on. Real nice rainbow. Excellent. He wants to go right away. There he goes, right yeah. for the bottom. Join the other guys. The best part for me was I got to see the take. Even though it was down about 15, 18 feet of water, I actually saw the fish come over and take the fly. He's feeding on some cronies. Cronies. Not a whole bunch. I loved cronies that when we get a bit of chop on the water. No chop. No. no very little. Yeah. And he did, oh, look at that guy emerging. That cronies just emerged in there. Yeah. Oh, Real yeah, bright cool. green. Yeah. And an LGF imitates the nice damsels that are in here, and you yeah. got him with that, so yeah. obviously. I'm going with the damsel. I'm going to stick with it. Well, you know, we can see them and the fish are right down on the bottom. So that's yeah. kind of why I went with the damsel. You gotcha. There goes that little fish. He's toast. We're back in action. You know, the one thing about White Lake, the lake we're at today, is when it's tough in the day, it is tough. And I always stress the importance Oh, this guy's big. I always stress the importance of having that riffle on the water. We've got a little chop up, and that was the first cast into the bay. And got this guy, and he is, he's a nice size fish. I got that guy on a chronomid, a nice little, nice little beadhead crony. Whoa, boy. Yeah, what'd you put on? You he's got on tough. the uh, mayfly, didn't you? Well, it's, it's what we call the red wiggler. Red wiggler, it's, Oh gee, oh no, I gotta go back. <laughs> Quickly get to the back of the boat here. Oh. Wow. This guy's tough. He is a big fish, man. Sounds like a nice fish. Oh yes, he's a nice size. Well you know what we did too, we've, we've tried a lot of spots today and it's taken until later on at night. So we did, did some stuff earlier in the day, That's tried a few cool. different yeah. shoals. He just took a break. And that's what happens. That's really good that you bring up that point, is why beat yourself up in the day when they're not on? That's right. It was dead calm. It was about 30 degrees out today. We we're just roasting, and the fish just weren't on. We noticed that last night. We came out last night a little later. You hooked like four in a row, four casts yeah, yeah. into fish. That was my second cast out there. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun tonight. <laughs> it could be a good night. So no good luck in the day. Go oh, relax. Take it easy. Yeah, and, well, uh, we did too. It yeah. was good. All right, Grant, you want to do the guide thing for me? You betcha. I think he's ready. He's, oh, he's played hard. He's made some fantastic runs. Oh, nice oh, fish. Well, that's what we've come to White Lake for. Yeah, you know you're going to get some big fish. He's healthy. You have all sizes, though, here. Yep, got him. Got him. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> that's the length of the net. That's a 20-incher. This is a 20-incher for sure, yeah. Right on. Beautiful. Oh, there it is. All right, this is very interesting. Yeah, it is, isn't it? What do we got there? We have a whole bunch of what we noticed big, earlier today. Yeah, big black ants. Flying black ants, yeah. Well, that's the tough part too, is we've seen a few boiling on the top and there have been a few ants, but not a whole bunch no. on the water. But that's it, some flying black ants. But you know what? He did take that little mayfly oh, crony yeah, imitation, so. little red wiggler, so I think I'll keep using it. And I gotta get rigged up here. If I see more fish boiling though, I mean, he's got the black ants. Yeah. You could put a big black ant pattern on try, but fishing dry in a lake is pretty tough. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Oh, more air time. Excellent. On the damsel again. Just getting it right down to the bottom. The nice thing about where we're at here, and the nice thing about White Lake is it's such a clear lake. You get the polarized glasses on like I just took off there, and you can see very well. And we got to a point right here where we can see fish cruising back and forth. Some nice sized ones, some little guys, which I just had on, a very little guy. And uh, noticing that they're just starting to feed. And for the last hour or so, about an hour ago, we were noticing they were just kind of swimming by and they weren't really feeding, but now they are. What'd you get them on? The damsel. A little marabou damsel, and it's kind of a cross between a damsel and a leech. It's, uh, are those the ones we just tied on the bench? Are those the ones we just tied up? Yeah. Yeah, the ones we just tied, yeah. Well, you know what we should do then? Is well, why don't we go to the bench? Go to the bench, yeah. It's a good pattern for sure. Tie, tie this one up. That would be an excellent thing to do if I get this guy in here. And then you should tell everybody what you're doing. You're actually going quite deep. Well, we're, we're probably anchored here in about, yeah, 12 feet of water. And we can see, like I said, they're kind of cruising back and forth along here. So I cast out to probably 15 feet. And I've got on this Aqualux line. And it's a great line. It's a clear line. And what I'm doing is letting that fly get right down to the bottom. And it's a clear intermediate sink. It actually sinks at a fairly decent rate. 
It's not bad. He's giving you a pretty good little pull. Oh, great fight. Yeah, well, you get the, get the good fish here. And I've been changing my retrieves, and I'm finding right now that they're, and that last night was the same way, a slower retrieve. They like the slower retrieve. Kind of long, right slow down pulls. At the and they're right down at the bottom, yeah. And that's where I'm picking them up, is right at the bottom. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Would yeah, you there like he is. to do the guide thing? Yeah. Ah, you, oh, you can handle it on your own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this guy's definitely ready. I thought he was. Oh, a nice long, uh, long snaky one. Oh, there we go. I got it. Oh, it's kind of wound up in him. This guy could take a little bit of revival. He wants to go, doesn't he? I kind of leave him in the net a little bit. Make sure he's revived. Fought very well. And we'll wait for him to go on his own. Nice sized fish. Good fight. Really good fight. I like the damsel fly, which is good. You know, last night I did four casts. There he goes. And caught four fish with that fly. So I think you're right. We should take it to the bench. Let's go learn how to tie up this little damsel. Kind of the damsel leech pattern, we'll call it. Today on the bench, we're going to tie up the damsel leech. We've named it the damsel leech because depending on how you fish it, you can fish it like a damsel, or you can fish it like a leech, and it works really good either way. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We're gonna tie the damsel leech on a size 12 TMC 2312 2X dry hook. We'll use some Wapsi 70 Ultra Thread to tie with. We'll use some brown marabou for the tail, a combination of brown marabou, light olive marabou, and yellow olive marabou for the body. For the wing case, we'll use some green pheasant tail, some light olive marabou with some yellow olive marabou for the head and for the ribbing some medium copper wire. I'm going to start off by taking my brown marabou and what I like to use on the brown marabou here is just the tips, the very tip of the marabou and when I use the dubbing I'll use actually the feather parts of this feather. But right now I want to use the very tip. I'm just going to straighten out and I'm going to make it the length of the hook, measure up the length of that hook, put it back and tie on the tail. After the tail's tied in, I'm going to take my medium copper wire and I'm going to lay it down onto the hook. And it doesn't hurt to lay down the copper wire onto the hook and actually build up a bit of a, a base on this wire and tie it back to the tail. Now to build up the body, I'm going to take a light olive marabou, my olive yellow marabou, and my brown marabou, and I'm going to pick off the fine fibers at the very bottom and start dubbing it onto my thread. And I'm just going to alternate between these three different marabou colors and keep dubbing onto my thread until I get a nice dubbing body built up on the thread. Now that we have all the marabou dubbed onto the body, we're just going to wrap it around the hook to form the body. And as you wrap it, you can see the multicolors built right into the fly. And we're going to wrap it up about an eighth of an inch from the eyelet, just to leave room enough for the head. We'll take our copper ribbing that we had sitting back there, our wire, and now we'll rib it forward and form about three to four ribs up the body and tie off. We'll take a small patch of our green pheasant tail and we'll tie it in just near the head and that will be our wing case that we'll bring over after we tie in the head. I like the head to be a little lighter, so I'm only going to take my light olive and my yellow olive marabou to dub in the head. So again, we're going to pick off some fibers and just alternate between the two colors and dub it onto your, to your thread. I've dubbed the two materials onto my thread and now I'm going to wrap forward and just form a nice bushy head. Our last step is we have this green pheasant tail and we're going to bring it over towards the eyelet to form a small wing case on the fly and tie in front and behind. We've finished the fly and it's complete. And there it is, the finished damsel leech. This pattern is really one of our favorite patterns here at Sport Fishing on the Fly. And you can tell as I turn this fly around, you can actually see that if you pick out the marabou on the body, 
it'll give it a real nice buggy look and that's the special thing about using the marabou. Try different colors, I know these colors work well, great fly. Boy, there's another one. All right. In the shallows. Yeah. Thick. Oh, wow, there's lots of fish cruising right now. Got this guy on the red wiggler though, again. Pretty potent. All right, I'm just gonna, whoa, gee, slide back into position. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's done. That's another post spawner. Another post spawner. Post -spawner. Well, we're getting another. them down this end of the lake. Yeah, we should are. talk a little bit about White Lake here while this guy's getting ready to come in. Sure. It's uh, a type of lake that I'm not sure a lot of people have heard about. A lot of fly fishermen have definitely heard about it. It's obviously a big lake, obviously a good coron emitting lake. Obviously, it's becoming a very technical lake, I think, because there's so much pressure on this lake. Oh, huge amounts of pressure on this lake. <laughs> Lots of people here. Oh, tons. But it's a good lake, like right after ice off, right up through, well, I hear people do really well right even into July. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's a nice one. All right, you're right. What I'm going to do is just let this guy go. It's a post-spawn fish, which is a, she's a very nice fish. There, it flies out. Barbara's hook, as always. There he is. He's a long fish, but again, he's just finished spawning, so he's pretty, pretty long and wiry. Not much to him, but oh, there he goes. He wants to swim away. And right down the bottom to sulk. There yeah. he goes, swimming away. Yeah, right on. Good job. Yeah, but you're right. White Lake is getting fairly busy, but I think the majority of people here are fly fishermen. The majority are, but it's you know it's an awesome lake for everybody because everybody is. can come here. Bit of a war zone at times. You see some people <laughs> who do that, the trolling oh, yeah. in between others. Yeah. It's a little unethical. But, yeah, that's yeah. the way it goes. Yeah. You know, you're going to take that. But if you come to White Lake, you know, what do you expect? Well, what, what should you bring actually? When it's you're a big to lake. lake. If you come to White Lake, you know, a lot of guys fish in pontoon boats, but I think you have to have a boat. You should have a boat out here. Something that you can anchor up. Two anchor system, critical. Because this is a really good chronomating lake, mayfly lake, and damselfly lake. And damsels too. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> he got the huge, the huge air. Because <laughs> fish in the nighttime, you know, the big fish, they come in, they're, they're not afraid anymore because they got the cover of darkness over them. Of course, we got the cover of darkness over us, which is why well, we have the light here. And uh, got a nice one, a nice fresh fish. You can tell he's fresh because he's got lots of size to him. Nice fat fish. And you're white. And you know what I put on? Two feet of water. I put on the damsel fly. The damsel leech. We call it because it, it imitated damsel or a leech because it's kind of that size. Oh, he doesn't like that at all. Come here, you. Come back in. Oh, there we are. Oh, right on. <sighs> this guy. Get my hand wet. The fly in the corner of his mouth here, so he doesn't uh, wiggle too much. A little damsel each. So we go look at this guy here. He's gonna bounce around too much for us to do that. That's a nice size fish. Uh, beauty. Nice silver, fresh. Sitting back in the catch and release net until he revives himself. It's a good way to do it. Not quite ready yet. I think he's ready to go. 